Hello, my name is Donna Bellamy and I'm the author of Raising Happy Hearts and I'm the mother of six. And today I'm just answering a question that was asked on my page about how do you date your spouse when you have kids in the house? And so people, when they see that I have six kids, they can just imagine that I'm run ragged, that I'm, that I have like, most of my time is devoted for my kids and I don't have much time for my spouse. But actually, you know, if you were to come into my house, if you were to see the dynamics of our house, you would see that our children, they don't take up all of my time. Yes, I devote my time to them. Yes, I spend time with them. Yes, I focus on them. You know, I make them my priority, but they also, they listen to my words. So when I send them to bed, they go to bed. And so I send the four little ones, they go to bed at about seven o'clock and then they're in bed and they stay there and they go to sleep. And then that leaves plenty of time for my husband and I, to, husband and I to have that, you know, quality time, that face to face time with each other where we just can spend that time, you know, that quality and the quantity time that you need in a marriage. You know, we can spend that because our lives don't revolve around our kids. We don't have hectic, you know, um, bedtime routines where, you know, all our focus is on the children that we can't focus on each other. You know, we have our house in order where the marriage is the priority of our house and then the children, they come after that. And yes, our children are the priority, but they can't come before the marriage. The marriage was there before the children and the marriage will be there when they leave the nest. And so the marriage needs to be the priority. You need to make sure you spend that time with your spouse, that you focus on your spouse so that you have that healthy marriage and that will flow down to the children. But you also need to make sure that you have your children in order, that they listen to your words, that they don't take so much of your time, that you don't have any energy and any time left over for your spouse. And so my book, I explain all that. You know, I talk about how I taught my children to obey my words and, and my husband obey his words so that we have that order in the house. We have the peace in the house. You know, we have more time to be able to devote to each other. Now it's important to not only just spend that that face to face time that that emotional connection where you know I'm able to pour out my heart to my husband and he listens and and then he pours out his heart to me and I listen and and we have that close fellowship because we are each other's best friend you know we go to each other first you know we don't have friends outside the marriage that we go to first that we confide in more you know that we're more intimate with that we do more things with you know our marriage is the most important relationship that we have outside of our relationship with the Lord. And so I go to my husband for, you know, if I, if I have an issue, if there's something on my heart and he comes to me and that's very important that you have that, you know, in your marriage, you know, cultivate that in your marriage. But also even more important, I would say, than that emotional connection, as far as that face to face time, you need to have that sexual intimacy in your marriage. And I know that a lot of wives, they don't have this as a priority. They think, you know, how could you demand that of me? You know, I have the children to take care of and, you know, and, and, and you do, you know, and the kids are important, but at the same time, your marriage is important and that sexual intimacy is extremely important in your marriage. And the enemy, he, you know, what's say he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is seeking to devour your marriage. You know, God brought you together. You were in the covenant of marriage and the enemy, he wants to tear you guys apart because he doesn't care who you sleep with or who your husband sleeps with as long as it's not each other. Because if he can get you to sleep with someone else or fantasize about sleeping with someone else, then he's created cracks in your marriage where he can come in and start destroying your marriage. So you need to make sure that you know, the foundation of your marriage is solid and a lot of that has to do with that sexual intimacy. It is extremely important for a husband to be able to get that satisfaction from his spouse. He wants it from you. And I know that I've heard of some women that are dealing with their husbands, looking at pornography in the marriage and, you know, and, and dealing with, you know, the hurt of that and different things. And, you know, I spoke to my husband about that and and he was talking about that, you know, wives need to understand that they need to give love freely to their husbands because when they give love freely, that whole temptation of looking at the pornography, it really diminishes. Like it doesn't, it's not as, you know, strong in their life. They're able to resist it, you know, and I kind of liken that to like, if I go to the store and I'm hungry, 
then I want to buy this, I want to buy that, oh my gosh, that looks good, that looks good. I ended up buying more than what I wanted to buy just because of my flesh, my appetite. But if I ate before I left the house and I'm full, then I just buy what's on my list because I don't want that, I don't want to eat that, I don't feel like eating that. And I kind of, that's the analogy the Lord kind of gave me. And it's not that, you know, I want to make excuses for husbands looking at porn or anything like that. But at the same time, we all have flesh. We all have the temptations in our life. For me, it's chocolate, you know, and for your husband, you know, it may be harder for him to resist looking at the pornography if he has his, he has um, sexual needs that are unfulfilled. And so I just wanted to encourage you to, you know, fulfill that for your husband, you know, make that sexual intimacy a priority for your marriage, because not only is it good for your husband, it's also good for you, because when you come together as a husband and a wife in that way, it is a picture, like a type and a shadow of Christ and his church coming together in intimacy. And so that is spiritual warfare. Just coming together as husband and wife is spiritual warfare. And that's why the enemy hates marriage and he hates, you know, fidelity. He hates that stuff. But that's why it's also so important to make sex a priority in your marriage because it draws you together. You know, you become one flesh and, you know, so many other good things come out of that. You know, even just, um, you know, I already told this story about this these wives where they, they came together in a group and they were all complaining about their husbands and their husbands aren't doing this and they're not doing that. And I've asked them to do this for six months and they haven't done it. And the lady who was over the meeting said, well, how about instead of asking them to do that, how about you go home and be a blessing to your husband? How about you go and, and try to be a blessing to him in the bedroom without asking for anything in return, just focusing on him and getting his needs met? And so the wives agreed to it and they went home and they all ministered to their husbands in the bedroom in that way. And then they came back a week later and they were all singing a different tune. They were all just delighted about how their husbands just had this major turnaround and how they were wanting to be a blessing to them, that they were doing the things that they'd previously asked without having to be reminded. And they just had this big turnaround, their husbands. And so I just wanted to encourage you that your husbands want you, you know, they want to be able to be intimate with you. They want that closeness with you. A lot of the time, husbands, that's how they express love is in the bedroom to you. And so I just want to encourage you, don't, don't um, feel like, you know, that you need to spend all your energy on your children. You know, make sure that you're keeping energy for your spouse and focusing on him and what he needs, you know, being available to him, showing him that you love him by being available in the bedroom. And, you know, now I'm just, you know, repeating myself. But I hope I made my point. And I know I probably haven't said it perfectly, but hopefully, you know, the Holy Spirit has ministered to you, you know, the heart of my message. And, and so if you have any, you know, questions of me, you know, obviously I don't know the answer to everything, but if there is something that I know, you know, I'd love to answer it for you. So just ask the question on my page and please like and share this if it was a blessing to you. And also like my page and I'll keep you updated because my book is in the works and it's going to be out eventually. And I'd love to share that with you. I can't wait. And so I'll keep you all updated on that. Okay. All right. Love you. Bye.